In this video, I'll be revealing 7 tips to speed up your design and visualization process using D5 Render. Because architects are constantly facing the challenge of meeting tight deadlines while maintaining high quality work. The complexity and detail required in architectural designs often lead to long hours, stress and inefficiency. However, by the end of this video, you will learn practical solutions and how to leverage modern technology to speed up your architectural workflow without compromising on the quality of your designs or your creativity. And the best part is, the software that you need is free. So let's get started. With the newest update of D5 Render, you can export a perspective section. To enable this tool, first go to File, Preferences, Widget, and make sure that the section tool is ticked. And then you can find the section tool right at the top here, and you can select a section plane or a section cube. The section plane will automatically align to any face, and then you can use the move tool to position the section plane in the correct place. You can also add a section fill, but this will depend of course on the model and if things were solid and void and if it was just modeled correctly, but this is an easy fix in Photoshop if things weren't modeled right. I'm going to add the section view and the perspective view to my rendering queue, that way I can let it run in the background while I'm working on something else. This is the final render, and then this is the section. Probably took less than 2 minutes. Another massive feature in the 2.5 version of D5 render is now you can use and create presets. So I can right click on any view and create a preset. The free version you are limited to only 5 presets. And you can choose whether this preset is for the environment, the effects or both. So now I can go to another D5 render file and then apply the preset. And that saves so much time because you don't have to constantly apply the same settings. In the pro version, in the D5 studio, you can see a section called D5 curated. Here you can find presets made by the D5 team. So you know they're super high quality and you can try every single one of these in the pro version. Presets, however, are not limited to just environment settings or effects. You can also use presets for brushes and paths. Let's create a preset for these shrubs and call it lawn, maybe. And then in another file, I can use it also as a brush. And then I can adjust the settings like the radius, the density, the size and all that. Let's create a preset for this path of hedges and add it to another D5 render. Speaking about vegetation, the asset library is incredible, it's huge and you have so many different variety of things to add to your model. Second of all, you can select up to six models so that you can apply it to a plane without it looking unnatural and repetitive. But you can also increase the radius all the way to the max and this way it will automatically scatter this across the plane. But do note that this does slow down your D5 render file. It depends on your graphic card and your spec if it can handle it. Also, when you are placing an asset, you can click on R on your keyboard and this will rotate the object before you place it. You can also group different assets together and that will make it easier for you to place it around the project. In D5 Render, you can adjust the environment manually, but they also have HDRIs. These are the ones that I've downloaded myself, but they also have some really great default ones. And with the newest update, they even added a few more. And HDRIs are such a useful tool. It's an effortless way of seeing your project in different views and lights. 
I can't believe how easy it is to create animations within D5 Front. Within the asset library under particles, you can add a fire to this fireplace and just watch it animate. You can also filter the asset library with only dynamic objects, so I wanted to add this dynamic fish tank to the scene, but I want to adjust this location a little bit, so I can click on here and this will directly move me to the fish tank, and then I can move it around and place it perfectly. So to create an animation, I'm going to click on this video icon here. And then I'm going to add a scene for this shot. And then I'm going to press W on my keyboard to just move in slightly closer. And then I can add another shot. And now when I play it, it's this really cool dynamic animation of moving closer into the scene. Let's add another shot maybe of this fireplace. Move in vertically. This time you can press Q and E on your keyboard to go up and down. In the same way, I've created these two scenes. But now I'm like, hmm, I think this shot should go before. So I can just drag and drop it to where I want it on the timeline. Okay, that's better. But I think that this should also go the other way around. So let's just switch out the individual views. And that's better. I think we need to add some dynamic characters to the scene to really bring a sense of scale. So let's add these two somewhere around here maybe. And I'm gonna rotate them to make them face each other and look like they're engaging in a very deep conversation. That opening looks way too small for the scene but for the sake of it let's just scale the characters down to make it seem a little bit more believable. You can press on your keyboard shortcut V to switch between the move tool and the scale tool so that you can adjust the character. So now let's go back and check our animation. I think it's looking so good so far but I think I only want those characters in the second scene so I'm gonna hide them from every scene and right click on it, update parameters, and that way they'll only show up in the second scene. That's perfect. Let's export the scene. You can of course export it with different frame rates, different resolutions. I'm gonna go with 4K and let's check it out. Such a high quality animation, something that I never thought I could do myself for free and within five to 10 minutes. If you're a SketchUp user like myself, in the newest D5 render update, you can now live sync with SketchUp. To use it, you have to download the different converter. I'll have that linked in the description box, which allows you to live sync. But this feature is so useful because now you can see changes of the design or your projects in real time. So you can see how it affects the final image and whether you like it or not. Lastly, but certainly not least, D5 Render now has its own AI, D5 High. And to use this, you will need to join a waiting list, but in my opinion, I think it's so worth it. I've done an AI video in the past and I've talked about how AI is so useful at the minute for gathering inspiration, not so much the final image or the final product, but it certainly speeds up your workflow when it comes to concept generation. All you have to do is write a prompt and then let the AI generate a few ideas for you. You can also upload a reference image and adjust the settings. I haven't tried that myself, but I am excited to see how well it works. 
And that's all for today's video. I hope that you found it helpful and that I have inspired you to embrace new tools and techniques that can make your work more enjoyable and ultimately more efficient. Thank you to D5 Render for sponsoring today's video. You can download the 2.5 version for free. The link is in the description box. I am Rasha Shiruru and I will see you next time.